Hey y'all, I just wanted to go over a few things and do a little mini review with you before you jump into those pro practice problems uh, that are posted on Schoology for you. So um, there's two ways that you can classify polynomials. Um, and so each polynomial that's written has a specific name based on two different characteristics. So the first characteristic you wanna look at is the degree of the polynomial. The degree is the number that is the largest exponent that you see on any x. So um, usually it'll be like two, three, four, and I'll show you some examples. But if you don't see an, an exponent or a power, then um, you have to, then you're either gonna have degree zero or degree one. Okay, so I'll try to explain the difference. You'll have a degree zero polynomial um, anytime you actually don't have an x. So if there's no x in your expression, then it is considered a constant. So this is where, this is where you have um, just like a single number. So you have like a two, three, five, six, ten, whatever. So if there's no x uh, at all in the expression, then it's considered a constant and degree zero. A degree one, you'll still won't see an actual exponent in the expression, uh, but you will have an x. So like if you have something like x plus five or x minus seven, or even something like just x, okay, then you have a linear polynomial. So this type of expression, a linear function, is one that we spent the majority of the first semester on. Uh, we looked at how to graph linear functions, um, all the y equals mx plus b stuff, all that good stuff. It was all linear. Now you'll have a degree two polynomial uh, if you have an expression where the largest exponent is two. Uh, so like if you have like x squared plus x plus five, something like that. Um, actually, I'm going to erase this just to kind of make this look a little bit more uniform here. So anytime you've got this x squared when the degree is 2, it means it's quadratic. Um, and that's the name of this polynomial. It's a quadratic polynomial. Uh, degree 3 is when the largest exponent is a 3. So you might have something like x cubed plus x squared plus x. And it doesn't really matter what all the rest of the terms are. Um, as long as that high, that largest exponent is a three, it's considered a cubic polynomial. Okay, degree four is quartic. Degree five is quintic. And then anything that is six or above, you just call it um, like either sixth degree or seventh degree or whatever the degree is. Um, it doesn't have a special name you just call it you know that nth degree so you know it might be sixth degree or seventh degree you know whatever the number is so like if if i have something that's like x to the tenth it would be to a tenth degree polynomial so no special name uh quartic going back here kind of filling out this table is where the largest exponent is a four and then a quintic is when the largest exponent is a five. I'll, I'll change that last term just to not confuse that. Okay, so you're really just looking at that largest exponent to name the polynomial. So um, I said at the beginning there are two uh, different ways to classify polynomials. And one is by making a note of the degree. The other way that we classify polynomials is based on how many terms there are. So notice how like this expression has one term, this expression has two terms, this expression has three terms, this one has four, this one has two, this one has two. So based on how many terms there are, um, we can also name the polynomial something different. Uh, we got a little run in by a little Sawyer over here. Uh, Sawyer, you wanna say anything? No. Nope, okay, he's going back to video I games. I wanted to say no. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so here, that is, that is all the polynomials uh, uh, classification based on degree. Um, you might want to write that down somewhere if you don't have it handy. You know, if you get asked a question, what's the name of this polynomial? Um, it'd be nice to have a little chart like this handy. So make sure you, you, you write this out. I'll give you a second to do that. Um, or at least pause the video so you can take a snapshot of it. Um, 
Okay, so let's go on and talk about the other type of classification that we use, which is based on the number of terms. So the second way of classifying polynomials is based on the number of terms, like as I said before. So let's say we have one term. Now, if you don't have any terms, you don't have a polynomial. So you need to have at least one term. That could be something like x. It could be something like x to the seventh. It could be just a constant like five. The degree of the term is not gonna affect how we classify the polynomial um, in this way. So as long as there's just one singular term, we call it a monomial. You might even have like a, uh, a coefficient on one of these terms. So like you might have like a three X that's still one term. So terms are separated. Um, maybe I'll make a little note here. They're separated by addition and subtraction separated by either a plus or a minus. Okay. So that's how you can count how many terms there are. If you, if your term has a coefficient, like something like three X, there's no plus or minus there. So this is just considered a single term. So if you have two terms, that's called a binomial. And a binomial, like I said, is something with two terms, something like two X plus five or x to the 10th plus x cubed. Okay, again, the degree here is not gonna affect whether or not it's a monomial or binomial, it's the number of terms. Notice that these terms are separated by either a plus or minus. If you have three terms, that's called a trinomial. Okay, if you have something like x squared plus two x minus five, Notice we have five, uh, three terms there, the x squared, the 2x, and the negative 5. If you have more than three terms, it doesn't really have a special name, just kind of like how we ran out of names uh, if you had more than, uh, if, if your degree was higher than 5. If you have more than three terms, you just give it a, a, a generic name. You call it a polynomial, so that's 4 plus, polynomial with four uh, terms. And I'll put a little asterisk here. Uh, asterisk here. Uh, if there's more than four, you would say a polynomial with however many terms. So like if it was like 10, you would say it's a polynomial with 10 terms. Um, now, these are the two different ways we can classify polynomials. Like I said, either based on the degree or the number of terms. But usually when we want to classify a polynomial, we take both of these two things into account. So as I go through some of the examples we're going to go through where we add, subtract, multiply, divide polynomials, um, I will be classifying them as we go. So you can see examples of like a quadratic trinomial or something like that. Uh, but yeah, the way you name them is first you say their name based on uh, the degree and then based on how many terms there are. And you can have any combination here. You could have a cubic monomial or a linear binomial. Um, there are some combinations that won't really work, but uh, for the most part, you, you can, you, you're going to name it based on this and then based on this. If you've got something with uh, like a degree 10 and with like 20 terms, you could say it's a 10th degree polynomial with 20 terms. Okay. So uh, that's it for the classification piece. So I also want to go over uh, some of the operations with polynomials with you. Just go over a few examples here. Um, we'll go over an addition problem, a subtraction problem, a multi couple of multiplication problems. And then finally, we'll look at division. All right, so first, let's go over an example where we have to add polynomials. So see, we've got two polynomials contained within the parentheses here, and we want to add these together. Generally speaking, when you're adding polynomials, all you really need to do is combine like terms. Um, I like to line up the like terms and add columns. Uh, that's something that I think is easy, a little easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this where I line up the like terms. Now I'm going to write 4m squared. That's a quadratic term. That's degree 2. And then we don't have a linear term here. We don't have a degree 1 term. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space and then uh, do like a plus 5 here. Um, I really don't need this two pluses. But just a little bit of space because I'm going to write this other polynomial right underneath it, m squared minus m plus 6. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to add these two polynomials. Um, I've got the like terms, meaning they have the same exponent, lined up. Um, you know, if you don't have one, if you're missing one, just leave a little bit of space so you don't add the wrong terms together. Um, and then when I add, I just combine them. So I'm going to add these columns, and I'm going to get 5m squared, and then this is like 0 plus a negative m minus m, and then 5 plus 6 is 11. So this would be the sum of those two polynomials. So that's basically how you add. Um, subtraction is very similar, uh, except there's one extra piece that you have to worry about. Uh, so let's take a look at a subtraction problem. Now before we do the subtraction problem, let's take a look at our answer for the addition problem here. Um, that is correct, but one thing I want to do is classify it. So just kind of go through that process of figuring out what the name of this polynomial is. So the first thing to look at is the degree, which is the largest exponent uh, any of the terms have. So we can see that the, expo the largest exponent 2 is here. So we can, we're going to say the degree is 2. Oops. Let's rewrite that a little bit. The degree is 2. And then we also want to keep track of the number of terms. So notice we have one, two, three terms. So the way that we would classify this polynomial or name it, since it has a degree of two, we call it a quadratic. And since it has three terms, it's a trinomial. So the name of this polynomial is a quadratic trinomial. And uh, I'll, we'll do that through with all the different answers. So let's look at the subtraction problem. Uh, you're gonna set it up very similar to how you do the addition problem, where you wanna line up all your like terms. So, so let's do that first. Seven n to the fourth. Um, there's no m cubed, no cubic term on this, like to the third power. So we're gonna leave a little bit of space. I'm gonna write minus two m squared. Uh, that's a quadratic term. We don't have a linear term or a constant, so we'll leave a little bit of space out there too. Look at the other term, the other polynomial, and we've got 5m to the fourth, no cubic term. Okay, so we really didn't need that space, but uh, we didn't know that until looking at that second polynomial. So minus 5m squared plus 8. No linear terms on either of these as well. So we're going to subtract these. Now you want to be careful. Keep in mind we're subtracting here, not adding. So just be real careful when you subtract these. 7 minus 5 is 2. So we get 2m to the fourth. Negative 2, this is where it gets a little dicey here. You may want to consider using a calculator. N negative 2 minus negative 5. In fact, uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to bring up my calculator to make sure that we're doing this right. And... Um, I would highly recommend you do the same thing when you work this out. Uh, here we go. Let's see if we can get that thing. There we go. So yeah, just to be on the safe side, we got negative 2 minus negative 5. Uh, and so we get 3. Okay, so plus 3m squared. Let me get rid of that for now. Um, and then plus 8. So this is my result. This is the difference between the two polynomials. Let's go ahead and name it. So the largest degree is four. Okay, so it's degree four. And the number of terms is three. We've got one, two, three. Okay, so uh, let's look at some multiplication here. Um, I'm going to go over two examples uh, on this just because I feel like these, these take a little bit more work and so I want to show you kind of two different types of multiplications here. Uh, now I will typically use what's known as the box method uh, to multiply polynomials. And so let's say we had something like um, x plus 3 times x plus 7 and I want to multiply those two together. Um, notice how both of these are binomials, specifically linear binomials, but uh, they each have two terms. And so what I'm going to do is construct a two by two box. 
So this is kind of why it's called the, the box method. And I'm going to put one of the, the binomials, and it doesn't really matter which one, I'm gonna put one of them on top, I'm gonna to write, write it on top of the box. So put X in this column, and then plus three in this column. And then I'm gonna do the same thing going down the side. So X and then plus seven. And what, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to multiply each column by each row and put the result in the box. So like in this box, I'm gonna do X times X. In this box, I'll do three times X. In this box, I'll do X times seven. And in this box, I'll do three times seven. I'm gonna write all those products and then my result uh, will be the sum of all these boxes. In other words, I'm gonna add all these together, um, which mostly means you're pretty much done, but you do wanna combine like terms. So let, let's see how this actually plays out. X times X is X squared. X times three is three X. X times seven is seven X. And then three times seven is 21. So my answer here should be x squared plus, uh, it would be 3x plus 7x, but because those are like terms, we can combine them. 3x plus 7x is 10x, and then we have plus 21. So that would be the result of that multiplication. So that's if we have a, a two by two multiplication. We could multiply polynomials of any size but that's just going to make our box here bigger. So like if I were to multiply a polynomial with seven terms by a polynomial with five terms, uh, it would take a lot more work obviously, but you'd have a, a, a five by seven box and you'd multiply all of those combinations of rows and columns and then write your final answer after you combine like terms. So let's just, I'm not gonna give you a five terms times a seven term or whatever I just said. Uh, I won't go that big on you. Um, instead, I'll, I'll usually keep it down to like three terms or less when we do the multiplication. Maybe four terms if I'm feeling a little, little crazy, but three terms is, is usually what, what I like to cap it out at. Um, so let's say x minus two times x squared plus x plus one, uh, minus one. So here notice I've got a binomial times a trinomial. So in a binomial times a trinomial, this is two terms, three terms, I'm gonna make a two by three box. So very similar setup to the other one, but I wanna make sure that I have enough columns here for my trinomial. Now, if you go three blocks this way versus three blocks going down, that doesn't really matter as long as you make sure the trinomial is on the side with the three blocks. Uh, up here, it, it absolutely didn't matter because you got two terms going both ways. But when these have different numbers of terms, you wanna make sure you've got the correct uh, polynomial on the correct side. So I'm gonna put x squared plus x minus one on this top side, and then going down the bottom, x minus two. And now I'm gonna go through and multiply each row by each column uh, and then combine like terms. So x times x squared would be x cubed, x to the third. x times x is x squared. x times negative one would be negative one x. Notice I'm not writing the negative one. Uh, you never have to write a, a coefficient of one or negative one. If it's negative one, you put the minus sign and it's understood to be negative one x. Negative two times x squared is negative two x squared. Negative two times x is negative two x. And finally, negative two times negative one is positive two. So I've got all my multiplication taken care of, I've multiplied each, uh, each row by each column, and now I just need to make sure I combine like terms as I go through and write my answer here. So um, my biggest degree term is this x cubed, and it's got no like terms. Notice it's the only cubic term on there. The next term I wanna look at are my quadratics. Okay, that's to the second power. So my quadratics, if I combine those, I get x squared plus a negative 2x squared will be negative 1x squared. Then negative 2x plus another negative x is going to give me a total of negative 3x. And then my final term, there's only one constant here, so there's nothing to combine that with. And so I just get that plus 2 at the end. 
So in terms of classifying each of these, this first problem ended up being a quadratic because of the degrees two trinomial, quadratic trinomial, and the trinomial because we've got three terms. The second answer we got was a cubic. Um, so that's degree three. And then we've got four terms. So remember, if we have more than three terms, we don't really have a special name for it. It's just a polynomial with that many terms. So we're going to call it a polynomial with four terms. So uh, pretty generic, but that's just what the name is. Um, so, so that's multiplication. Let's take a look at division. Now division is probably, well, I mean, I think for most people it's the most complicated one. Um, so I'm going to split this up into two like separate categories. The easier type of multiple, uh, division is when you're dividing by a monomial, just a single term. And then it gets a little bit more complicated and I'll go through the process of how you do it. Uh, but uh, when you divide by a binomial, those tend to be a little tougher. And uh, the same technique that I'll show you for the binomial, you can also use for any, high, any, any polynomial with more terms than that. Um, so dividing by a monomial, that's when you're dividing just by a single term, in this case, negative three X. Um, I'm gonna rewrite this as nine X squared plus 15 X divided by negative three X. I think it's just a little easier to kind of look at when you write it as a fraction. Um, and what you want to do here is you're going to divide each term uh, in the mon in the you're going to divide each term in uh, the uh, numerator by by the monomial that's in the denominator. So in other words, we're going to divide this 9x squared by negative 3x, and we're going to divide the 15x by negative 3x. We'll divide each one. So dividing 9x squared by negative 3x. Uh, first, you want to think about the coefficient. 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. x squared divided by x is x. And this goes back to our, our exponent properties where uh, when you divide um, two uh, variables that have the same base but different exponents, you subtract the exponents. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's why it just ends up being a regular x. Then we got 15 divided by negative three is negative five, and x divided by x is just one. Five times one is one. So uh, your result here would be negative five, I'm sorry, negative three x minus five. And the classification for that polynomial, since the degree is one, it's not written here, but you do have the x, so it's assumed to be one, is a linear, and since there's two terms, it's a linear binomial. Okay. Um, so when you're dividing by a monomial, that's basically it. You just divide each term um, by that monomial. When you're dividing by a binomial, this is where you have to do that long division that we went over um, before the big break. Uh, and so this is, the, I'll go through that division algorithm with you here. Um, just gonna talk through how I end up with my quotient and um, potentially a remainder as well. So first you write the divisor. I mean. Uh, well, just first you write the divisor. So 7, 8, x minus 1. And then you're going to draw this um, like big division symbol like you would do long division like in elementary school. Um, and we're going to write um, the dividend inside here. So like the numerator part of the fraction. 14x squared uh, minus 23x plus 6. And so the process here is you're going to look at this first term and you're going to ask yourself, what do I need to multiply this first term to make it equal to this first term? And so I need to multiply the seven by two to get 14 and I need to multiply the X by X to get X squared. So what I need to multiply here is seven X times two X to make it equal to 14 X squared. And whatever that something is, you're going to write it on top. So I'm going to write two X or here, I'll use a different color just to, so this doesn't get too muddled. So 2x, I'm gonna write up there. Okay, 2x times 7x is the 14x squared, and that is intentional. You want that to be the same as this. That's kind of the whole reason why we're picking 2x up here. But we also need to multiply by the negative one. So 2x times negative one is negative 2x. 
And from here, we're going to subtract downwards. We're going to subtract all the columns that we have. So 14x squared minus 14x squared is zero. That term goes away, and that is, again, intentional. That's the whole reason why we picked this 2x, so that when we subtract here, this, the first term disappears. Then we have negative 23x minus negative 2x. Again, here we're subtracting negatives, so you want to be careful here. Um, I would recommend going to the calculator anytime you get to subtract negatives. Uh, just to be careful, I mean, uh, even as a veteran math teacher over here, I still, when I try to subtract negatives mentally, um, I still make mistakes. So I just try to avoid it, and here we go. So we get negative 21. Um, oh, wrong one. Nope, there we go. So we get negative uh, 21x. plus six. So after you do subtraction, you're going to bring down whatever the next column is or the next term. And then you're going to go through that same algorithm again. So you're going to try to find something that I can multiply this first term by to make it equal this, write that up here, multiply by this entire binomial, and then subtract. And I should get either zero, meaning that uh, this is a factor of this, or if I get something else, then I have a remainder. But either way, I'm pretty much done. Um, so think about it for a minute. What do I need to multiply 7x to make it equal to negative 21x? And that would be negative 3. So I'm going to write negative 3 here. Um, and I'm going to multiply negative 3 by those two terms. So I've got negative 3 times 7x is negative 21x. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. I'm getting a little running. You want to say anything, Sawyer? No, I just want to see myself. Well, come on this side. You'll see you a little better. Come on this side. There you go. Up. Oh, get a little closer. You're going to have to come in a little closer there. Up. Oh, there's your head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so when we subtract these, I'm going to get 0, which is what yeah. I anticipate. And then 6 minus 3 is 3. Sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, our remainder is three. Uh, we do have a remainder here. So the way I'm gonna write my quotient plus my remainder is gonna look like this. Um, so this will equal two X minus three plus the remainder divided by the divisor, seven X minus one. So this is my result. So I get two X minus three plus uh, this 3 over 7x th minus 1. Now, because we've got this division here, this is not a polynomial anymore. Um, I guess it never was in the beginning. But so, like, at this po you know, in terms of classifying it, you would not classify something like this because it's not a polynomial. Um, this one, uh, this div uh, uh, dividend is a quadratic trinomial. The divisor is a linear binomial. But when you divide it out, you get, um, you get something that's not a polynomial. So no classification there. It's actually called a rational expression. Uh, we haven't really talked about that yet. Um, but there you go, so that would be dividing. So that that's pretty much all you need to know for the test. You need to be able to classify polynomials based on their degree and number of terms. You need to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomials. Um, and that's pretty much it. So our test will be next class. Um, and uh, I wish you luck. Uh, if you have any problems with the review or you have any questions, please let me know. Um, just re reach out to me uh, via email or something and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can.